This is tutorial number three. In tutorial number three, I'm going to do to go right across the menu bar up here, or this top bar. We're going to go over what all that stuff does. And what you're going to find, although it doesn't look like much, it's going to put everything together for you, and it's going to make it's going to make everything else make sense. So the first thing right here, when you create a new design in Tinkercad, creating a new design, it gives you a random name. Now, to change that random name to something that is easy to find or that makes sense. All you have to do is click that whatever that random name is and change it to whatever you want. I'll call this tutorial, right? Very simple. Click off of it and it doesn't look like it changed, but it will eventually change itself. So now I've got different shapes here from the design before. So out of all these different files here, I've got copy. I can copy a shape. I can paste a shape. So now I've got two of that particular shape. I don't need it, so I'm just going to hit backspace. Next to that is duplicate. Select the shape, and when you duplicate a shape, it makes an exact duplicate right on top of it. It looks like nothing happened, but if I pull a shape away, I have two. All right, so be careful with that one. It can be very, very useful, though. I love duplicate. I use it for a lot of stuff. Now, right here is delete. Um, you can delete shapes, but I tend to just use the backspace key. Whatever works for you is fine. I'm going to choose two shapes now. I'm going to draw my band around two, and I can duplicate two shapes very easy. Now what happens if I click this here and I'm going to hit duplicate? It looks like it didn't work. Hit duplicate again. Still didn't work. Hit duplicate again. What you've done is you've created many copies of that shape. So be careful with the duplicate key. It can sometimes cause trouble for you. I just got rid of everything I don't want. All right. Now, the undo. I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to use the shift right click to slide my view just a bit. What if I lined this cylinder up perfectly, exactly where I wanted with this shape right here? Now, I accidentally bumped it and messed the whole thing up. It's really easy to use the undo key to put something back. Now, what if I accidentally backspace that? Oh no, I've deleted it. I can undo and bring it back. The undo can be very, very useful. I tend to use it most for when I'm trying to inch things in. Like let's say it took me forever, I'm using the keyboard now, the little arrows, to get it just right. And then after it's just right, I bump it and mess it all up. I use the undo key to fix that. And of course, redo is the opposite of that. Now I'm gonna shoot across the bar here to this little tiny show all. I ignored the one in the shape editor because I don't like to use this feature. If you hide a shape, it's gone. You cannot see it, but it's still part of your design. Now, if I go to show all, it will come back. I don't like to hide a shape like this. If there's a shape that I don't want here right at the moment, I will just take that shape and put it outside of my work plane. I'm not working out there. And then I can quickly zoom out and I can see all the different shapes that I've got outside my work plane and the different things I'm working on. So I just kind of use that as a out of play area where I line up all my other stuff. Personal preference, whatever you like. That's just the way I like to work. I'm going to bring this guy back in. Now what I want you to see is how I have this hole. This cylinder is marked for hole. I could go solid. I would have a solid piece like this, or I could turn it into a hole, and I would take that chunk out of the shape. And I'll show you what both of those look like with the very next menu item. It's called Group. Group is very, very powerful in Tinkercad. It's the way you either add or subtract the shapes that you want or don't want. So the problem is, if I select one thing, I can't group it. You can't group one thing. So what you have to do is select more than one. I only have two shapes here, and those are the only two I want. So I'm just going to do it the easy way. Click and pull a band around them. Then I'm going to let go, let, let go, and boom, I've selected two shapes. It tells me right here I've got two shapes selected. Now if I group them, process this for a moment, and then there you go. I have one single shape with the whole has cut out of exactly what I want in exactly the right place. Very simple to do. This acts as one shape now. I can go ungroup it. And what if I make this a solid? I can group, let's draw a band around it. When I group it, 
it becomes one color, it becomes a solid shape. That is one single shape now. That's how you get pretty much any shape you want. I'm going to ungroup this. I want this to be a hole. So we're going to cut off a part of that cylinder. I hope as you see me grouping these different shapes, you realize the possibilities with Tinkercad. This is one single shape now. I can make pretty much anything I want by making one shape a hole and one shape a solid. It really is very simple to do. I'm going to swap these around now. I want this to be a hole because we've done group and ungroup. The next thing I want to show you is a line. A line is a very, very cool tool most of the time. Sometimes it just doesn't do what you want. I always tell my students, like, once in a while, a line is just not going to be right and you have to eyeball it. So keep that in mind. Once in a while, you're going to have to eyeball things. All right, so now I want to align stuff. I'm going to select what I want to align and I'm going to go to align. And when I click align, I get these weird handles. You see, I get these three different three dimensional handles, X, Y, and Z. So if I wanted to align, let me turn it sideways so it's a little clearer for you. If I wanted to use this align, it would align the two shapes one way, this way. Do you see the shadow moving? So it kind of tells me where they'd be lined up or right here. I want the shapes centered like this. So boom, it just centered this way. And you see it goes gray to tell me that. Now if I turn to this side, I want it to also be centered this side. So I'm going to choose that right there. Boom, it just put a dead center in both spots. Now I have to decide, I accidentally turned off of the line, so I'd have to select and go back into it. Now if I wanted it aligned that way, let's look at what that looks like. Aligned, move, it would move that that square shape up, rectangular prism, I should say. Move it all the way to the top so the two shapes are matched at the top up here and then bottom. Well, I don't want that. What I want is I want this shape right here to be a certain depth. Let's get out of alignment. I want this shape to be a certain depth in the other one. So I just want this single shape selected. Let's this does this sometimes. Don't, don't worry about it. Like right now, I'm stuck in, in selecting two shapes. You can't get out of it. It's no big deal. Um, sometimes I'll just click over here, bring in a new shape, and boom, that's taken care of and get rid of it. It's not perfect. It's a web-based 3D design software. It's not perfect. So now I can click my, click my one shape. Looking from the side, rotating my view, so I'm looking at the left here, this is the bottom of my shape. So if I group this right now, it would be centered all the way around, but on the bottom, it would cut out a hole this deep. If I want that, that's what I'd draw a band around and group. And what you're going to see is perfectly centered with a nice little hole down in there. What if I want the hole to go all the way through? So that's going to be simple. I'm going to ungroup it. Now I will lower this shape so that some of it sticks out the top, some of it sticks out the bottom. Now I'm going to draw a band and group them, and you've got a hole right through. Very, very simple to do. With these, with this group and ungroup and solid and whole, these features right here, you can draw just about anything you could imagine. Now what I need to do right now is make this irregular. Now I've made this irregular on purpose because I want you to be able to see what the next tool does. Here's a line, and here's flip. So. If I click on flip, I have to select something first. If I click on flip, I get these arrow options. I could flip it left, or so that would be a kind of end over end right here. And that would make the same exact shape. If I flipped it like this, it would flip it around. Now this one, you will see the difference. Actually, you don't see it at all. Oh my goodness. That was a very bad choice. But this is like mirror. You can mirror a shape and flip it around any way you like. Uh, this might be more like it. I'm going to bring in a hole and put in a little bit of a hole right here. Make the shape very irregular. And then we'll let me get rid of this guy. I gave you a bad example. Here's a better example. So I'm going to select this irregular shape and to flip it, it would flip it top to bottom. You can see the, let me get a little closer for you so you can see that better. We we'll flip the shape top to bottom. I could flip it left to right. 
and I could flip it forward to backward, which in this case would be exactly the same. So now what I could do, if I needed two of the exact but perfect opposites, I would duplicate a shape. And then once that shape is duplicated, I could flip it. Now I have two perfect opposite shapes. I didn't have to take the time to make them. All I had to do was duplicate and flip. This can be a very, very useful tool for many different things. Knowing how to use flip is great. Now, the last of the tools that I want to show you across this bar are import, export, and share. Import allows you to find an STL on someplace like Thingiverse or something like that. And you can import that STL right into Tinkercad and you can actually alter that pre-made STL that someone else created. Export is what you'll do to download your 3D print. Let's pretend that my print is ready to go. I would just have to hit export. The selected shape as an STL file, it takes me to, it calls it what I want it to be called. I can put it in any folder I want and I hit save and I'll have my STL file wherever I put it. It is that quick and that simple. Very, very easy to do. Now, just as an example, I'm going to export that right now. So I'll choose STL file. I'm just going to put it right on my desktop so I can delete it easier. So it's called tutorial. All right. Now let's go into my desktop. Let's pretend that I want to import the STL called tutorial. I want you to see the difference between a Tinkercad design file and what a finished STL file is. So I'm going to go to import, choose a file to import. I need to go to my desktop, wherever I left it, desktop. There it is right there, tutorial. I'm going to open that up. Scale 100, there's the dimensions. I normally don't alter that. Let's import. Now I'm importing that STL file. Boom, there it is. Boy, that looks very different from what I exported, doesn't it? Very, very different. Um, actually, there's an error here. There's something wrong. It didn't do both. So I can see right there I've got a mistake. Let's try this again. Um, it should have had time to save right now. Nothing is selected. Let's try that export again. Sometimes a few little weird things happen. This time it's going to be tutorial one, okay? No, we'll just overwrite the file. That's fine with me. Yeah, I'm going to replace it. That's fine. All right, now it's downloading and it looks like it's done. So I'm going to go to import again, choose the file, tutorial open, import. Now let's see what happened here. Now it seems to have worked. That was a very odd one. But take a look at this. I can't ungroup it. This is one solid file that I can't change. An STL file. Once you've converted a design file from Tinkercad into an STL file like this pink guy here, you can't change it. It becomes one shape forever. Now, what I could do is cut pieces out of that guy. I can alter that if I want to, but I can't ungroup it like I could before. I hope that makes sense to you for import and export. Now share, you can post it on Tinkercad's website um, for other people to use or look at. I normally don't share any of my designs unless it's something for a 3D design class that I want students to see, or if it's for an activity that I want them to get. I want all the students to have a full set of the shapes in the right place and all set up for them. And then they can go in and alter something specifically. I use that. Now, let me bring in the ruler. That's one thing right here I want you to see. If I bring in the ruler, I can put it where I want. Let's say I want it right here. The ruler gives me increments here and lets me measure. I don't like the ruler. I don't feel like it's a useful tool. In my opinion, it's easier to say this dark blue cube or square, it's not a cube, this square is one centimeter. That means that each one of these little guys is one millimeter. That's all there is to it. I don't use the ruler because what I would rather do is move my shape to a corner, any corner I want, and I can say one, two, three, four, one millimeters. See how easy that is? Then I can say, okay, this one is 20. And if I go look at that, 20 and 41, it was really easy to count. 
very simple rules there if you wanted it, but it's not the best thing. Now, in the next tutorial, we're going to get into some really complicated, great stuff. For now, though, I want you to throw some shapes in, and I want you to go across this bar here, change the name of whatever you're working on, call it practice or tutorial, then go through and copy, paste, duplicate some stuff, practice playing around with solids and holes, and grouping and ungrouping. This is the really important part right here. Get used to that. Start to learn and understand how grouping and ungrouping can give you really any shape you want. And I'll get into a little bit more of that later on too with one of the button tutorials. But for now, just play around, make some shapes, and figure out how this is done. Don't worry about import and export for now. We'll get into that when it's called for, but right now we don't need to worry about that.